Bale. Unsurprisingly, Bale, the Lord of Destruction, like his brothers, was inspired from real-world religions and, like his in-game origins, boasts an unusual and disturbing history. Diablo fans know Bale best for his lust for destruction, unparalleled as his sadistic delight in causing chaos. The Lord of Destruction is not a title alone, as he is undoubtedly the enemy of all creation, as seen in Diablo 2 where Bale successfully corrupted the reality-shaping world stone, nearly plunging humanity into eternal darkness. My brothers will not have died in vain. Interestingly, Bale hasn't always bore the title of Lord of Destruction in the real world or the Diablo franchise alike. In this video, we will explore Bale's checkered history with humanity in-game and how it relates back to his mythos in scripture across many religions. So here are the disturbing origins of Bale that you may not know. Now I think you shall have your reward. Before, before Baal led his army, before he breached the gates of Seshra and put the barbarian city to the sword, before, a thousand times before, to the time of the Horadrim, who faced the Lord of Destruction and imprisoned him within the Soul Stone. As with all the great evils, Bale spawned from one of the seven heads of the great dragon Tathamet. Tathamet was the evil that was once part of the original god, Anu, who attempted to cast off his evil to become pure. The two entities battled for eons in a stalemate until both Tathamet and Anu fell simultaneously. The spine of Anu created the heavens and the body of Tathamet became the burning hells with each of its seven heads creating the greater evils, Bale being the middle child of Diablo and Mephisto. The Lord of Destruction is almost spider-like in his appearance. Most likely, one of the most recognizable traits of Bale is his festering appendages, tentacles that manifest in various places on his body. In battle, Bale summons these from the ground to impede the player's path. Bale's domain in the Burning Hells was the Realm of Destruction, and his doctrine was simple. It is said of Bale's followers that they seek the undoing of the very universe, striving for ultimate disorder and destruction, and to this end, covet the destruction of all they behold. Order is an abhorrence to them, and these creatures are the manifestation of the forces of chaos. However, when sanctuary was created and man had sprung forth from the union of angel and demon, the greater evils turned their attention from the eternal conflict and towards humanity itself. Sensing the dormant power within humanity and reasoning it could be turned to suit their own ends, the prime evils began a campaign to tip humanity over to their side. And what better way to enlist new recruits than to create your own religion? As such, they founded the Triune, a seemingly benevolent religion that was actually a front for their true motives. Each of the primes took on an alter ego for worship, and in Bale's case, he was known as Bala, the spirit of creation. Represented by a leaf in triune iconography, Bala was depicted as wielding a hammer when he himself was betrayed along with a bag which the triune's priests preached contained the seeds of all life. Both nature and the architectural triumphs of humanity were said to be under the auspices of his spirit. This of course did not stop Bale from reveling in his true nature, as he had shown to have a sadistic side in the murder of his foes, and frequently would indulge in feasts of human flesh and blood with his brothers. Creatures would then feed off the remnants of such feasts. Of course, the perception of Bale from benevolent spirit of creation would later be shattered as the Sin War concluded, his true nature revealed. However, the story of Bale being revered by some religions and later reviled by others actually mirrors real-world religions. 
In ancient times as far as 3000 BCE, like the Triune's worshippers on sanctuary, the Canaanites, located in the area that now encompasses northern Israel, Syria, Jordan and Lebanon along the Mediterranean Sea coast, considered Baal a fertility deity and one of the most important gods in the pantheon. As a Semitic common noun, Baal or in Hebrew, Baal, meant owner or lord, although it could be used more generally. For example, a Baal of wings was a winged creature, and in the plural, a Baalim of arrows indicated archers. So there you go. Rogues are now Baalists. Yet fluidity in the term of Baal did not prevent it from being attached to a god of distinct character. As such, Baal was designated the universal god of fertility, and in that capacity, his title was Prince and Lord of the Earth. He was also called the Lord of Rain and Dew, the two forms of moisture that were indispensable for fertile soils in Canaan. Baal was a figure who persisted through many religions and was even later exposed to Egypt where he was worshipped as the storm god. However, such is the case with many pagan religions is out with the old and in with the new. Baal's place in the pantheon only began to be questioned in Abrahamic religions, starting in the Old Testament, when the Israelites had returned from their 40-year wandering of the desert, arriving in the fruitful land of Canaan. They were warned not to worship the pagan gods of Canaan, specifically Baal, and the Hebrew people should remain true to their own god, Yahweh. However, the people's faith was tested after wandering for so long, and some decided to side with the Canaanites' god of old, but were ultimately punished for their transgressions in the new lands with a three-year drought. So we see Baal has gone from creator, lord, and being worshipped to being seen as a false god. But his fall in the eyes of new religion had just begun. The Quran mentions the prophet Elias warned his people against Baal worship. Indeed, Elias was among the messengers when he said to his people, You will not fear. Do you call upon Baal and leave the best of creators, Allah, your Lord and the Lord of your first forefathers? Later, in Hebrew, Baal took on a more demonic form. Known as Baal Zebub, or Fly Lord, is mentioned in the first chapter of the second book of Kings as the name of the Philistine god of Ekron. In it, Ahaziah, king of Israel, is said to have consulted the priests of Baal Zebub as to whether he would survive the injuries from his recent fall. The prophet Elijah, incensed at this impiety, then foretold that he would die quickly, raining heavenly fire on the soldiers sent to punish him for doing so. Jewish scholars have interpreted the title of Lord of the Flies as the Hebrew way of calling Baal a pile of dung and his followers vermin. Interestingly, this title was actually imparted on Belial in the Diablo universe, as his corruption manifests with the appearance of botflies. And there's even an achievement called Lord of the Flies, but that's more a pun toward his Lord of the Lies title. In the New Testament, Baalzebub was later condensed to Beelzebub, and he was identified by the writers as Satan, prince, i.e. king, of the demons. Later, Baal and derived epithets like Baalist were used as slurs for the saints and their devotees during the 16th century English Reformation, where the Church of England broke away from the Pope and Roman Catholic Church and were gifted with new titles. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more histories of characters in games and where their origins came from, especially disturbing ones, let me know in the comments below. I hope I was respectful to all of the religions. I did cover briefly and show links to outline how the developers came to their creation of Baal and art imitating real life. But what did you think? Let me know in the comments below and who you'd like to see next. As always, thanks for watching and until next time, traveler.